right guys, so finally my Lefebvre set came in, so I'm happy to do uh, just an out of the box overview before I, I haven't used these yet. They just came in a couple days ago. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting them on the ice uh, this coming week, but these are just going to be my initial thoughts and just to sh show you the pad. Um, I know there's been you know a lot of buzz about Lefebvre. They're an old school uh, manufacturer, uh, have a lot of um, you know, a lot of fans over the years, a lot of people that have loved using their gear. They've, uh, you know, back in, what was it, the 80s, old days, they, they actually produced under their own name. Then uh, they were producing pads like under Coho, uh, under Reebok, under CCM, and now they've gone out on their own again. But then just recently they partnered with True. So now they're gonna be putting out pads under the True name. I believe it's gonna say like True and then by Lefebvre, kind of like how when they were with CCM, it would say CCM and then by Lefebvre. Um, as of right now though, they're still gonna be um, just like the 12.1 series, the 20.1, 4.1, and I'm missing one. Anyway, whatever, but it's still the 0.1 series of all these uh, models, even though now they're gonna be producing them under the true name. So, I mean, it should be within this next upcoming year, 2021, probably around spring they'll come out with the point two line of all the different pads. Um, but like, I've, I've had questions saying, oh, is is it the same pad if it says Lefebvre or if it says True? So as of right now, if you're just, if you're still getting the, any pads that say point one on them, it's still gonna be the same pad, even if it was from when they just had Lefebvre on it or now that they're gonna be starting to put True on it. Um, as far as like when you order, like if you order the pad now, I don't know if it would come labeled as True or labeled as Lefebvre. Um, I would assume at this point going forward, they're going to start labeling everything as true since it's a done deal and, and they're, they're working with them now. Um, I ordered mine before like the deal was finalized and everything. So mine came as Lefebvre. I don't really care. It's like I said, it's the same pad either way. Um, so anyway, this is a lake pad without further ado. I got the 12.1 model. Uh, so this is basically going to be like, a CCM E-Flex 4 type of pad, which is, again, like I was saying, Lefebvre was making it for CCM. Um, now, the difference is CCM, as far as I know, doesn't produce anything in North America anymore. All their stuff is offshore, even stuff that goes straight to the pros. Uh, NHL guys, like from what I've heard, they're, even NHL guys are receiving offshore made gear because as far as I understand, Lefebvre was their North American manufacturer. So now that Lefebvre's not with them anymore, everything they do is offshore. So that might be a reason why, you know, you've seen uh, some of the NHL guys going with or trying out Lefebvre now. I mean, part of it is also just their relationship with Lefebvre and they want to keep using them, but it also might be the whole North American offshore made stuff. For me personally, that's never been a huge deal. You know, if all things being equal, sure, I'd rather support North American business, but I have owned pro pads that were made offshore, like um, Warriors pro pads. Uh, I had a Reebok Larceny set that was made offshore. And if you hadn't told me that stuff was made offshore, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. It's still, the craftsmanship was fine. It, it worked fine. It didn't like break down quicker or anything like that. So I really feel like a lot of that's overstated. A lot of that is just people wanting to support North American made stuff, which there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're worried about quality, I, I really don't think it's a big deal just because it's made offshore. I mean, you can make quality stuff offshore. It's, you know, whatever. So I wouldn't necessarily hold that against uh, a pad. But that being said, this is a uh, North American made in Canada, Lefebvre gear. Um, like I said, this is this is basically a, a, like an E-Flex 4 pad, the 12.1. Um, so like some of the specs I ordered it in, so if you, as you can see, there's no external break. So I asked, I went through pure goalie, um, because the thing with Lefebvre, when you're ordering stuff from their web or you go on their customizer, they have like a lot of options. It's almost overwhelming. And like a lot of stuff, they don't really explain it. Actually, there's really no explanation. It just gives you the drop down menu and a lot of different options for stuff. So it can be very confusing, like even for me that I've been playing and ordering gear for years. Some of the stuff was kind of confusing to me. Um, so like originally I was looking for an option of like double break, 
because I, I just wanted to try to get it as flexible as possible. So I was looking for like a double internal, double external brake option, which they don't even offer that. Um, but then they had all kinds of different ones. There's like, like any other than double external, you can get almost any other option imaginable. No brake either way, single internal, no external, double internal, no external, single, double, like any combination. It, like as I said, it's like overwhelming at some point. So, and then within each one of those, you can also get, d decide to get soft or hard flex. So it's like a lot of this, and that's just for the brakes. <laughs> I haven't gotten to other options yet. So uh, I went through Pure Goalie to order this. Um, a guy named Steven Sorwacki is his name. He does, he's in charge of the, the uh, custom gear department for Pure Goalie. And he was a huge help to me. He just goes by Wack. He likes to be called Wack. So I'll just, for the rest of the video, I'll just refer to him as Wack. But I also wanted to just get his actual name out there. But he's a great dude. Uh, really helped me a lot. So I asked him, like, bottom line, what is, what option should I get as far as the brakes to make it as flexible as I can get it? Um, and he told me the option to get is the double internal, no external. So apparently, and then the soft option, because you can get double internal, no external, and either soft or hard, stiffer. So I got the double internal, no external, soft option, as far as the brake and flex. And also got the soft boot, which you can get soft or stiffer boot. So apparently, again, I haven't used these yet, but apparently this is the softest you can order this pad um so the boot has a, has a good amount of flex to it that i will say yeah okay that's a soft boot um it's more flat it's not like an angled boot um but as far as the pad flex um and i mean i was kind of expecting this not that i've ever used uh the ccm e flex line pad before but I've, I've seen a few of them like in a store or whatever and i've kind of played around a little bit and i could tell they seemed stiffer than like when i get my vaughn pads so like my vaughn my recent v9 set which i have videos about that if you're interested in that go look those up um out of the box the vaughns were definitely more flexible than these so i mean these have a flex to them you know it's not like a, a bauer or ultrasonic or whatever or a, a brian's optic Definitely has flex to it, but it's not as flexible as uh, uh, Vaughn, or at least as you can get a Vaughn pad. Like I, I ordered my Vaughn V9s as the most flexible settings you can get with them. So, and this is the most flexible setting you can get with these. And definitely out, at least out of the box, Vaughn is noticeably more flexible than these. But that being said, like I said, they're, def I mean, they're definitely flexible. You can flex them. Um, and it could be a case where like, you know, these just need to be broken in a little bit to get more of that flex out of it. Whereas the Vaughn's just out of the box came that way. Um, where, which that's kind of like how pads used to be 15 plus years ago. Even the ones that were supposed to be more flexible, they required some break in. They didn't come necessarily that flexible out of the box. Um, like I mean, even I remember my Reebok Larceny set, for instance, the, the leg pads out of the box, they were kind of stiff. And then after a while, they definitely loosened up a lot. Um, and I would say at this point, you know, just looking at this pad again, haven't used them yet, but this is definitely not like a cutting edge necessarily technology and stuff. I would say this is probably one of the uh, more traditional older style pads out there at this point. Now that Vaughn with the V9 has definitely made some improvements in technology, made it a little more modern. Uh, you know, the Vaughn Velocity series over the last few years has kind of been labeled as sort of the oh it's kind of older still it's they're not up to the newest specs newest technology i kind of at this point i feel like and i'm gonna lump the ccm eflex and this lefebvre together since they're basically the same pad and lefebvre designed the, the ccm eflex for but i'm gonna say like the this type of pad the lefebvre and the eflex is uh probably one of the more older style pads that are still being made as a, as a current um line right now I mean, and that being said, it's not, it's not that it's a bad pad or anything like that. It's just, if that's what you're looking for, this is probably the option for you. And if you're looking for very modern specs, this might not be the option for you. Um, as far as thickness, it's, it's not thick. It's, it's pretty thin. Um, trying to, I'd say it's probably roughly about as thin as the Vaughn. Maybe the Vaughn might be a little thinner at this point with the V9s. Um, 
But as far as weight, uh, I, I don't really have a good way to weigh a full pad because like I have a little tiny scale, but I can't really balance a whole pad on top of it. Um, so I'm not, I don't even bother weigh these things, but just have to guess by feel. These feel mm, slightly heavier than the Vaughn. I, I still wouldn't say they're like a heavy pad. I don't really think there's any current line or type of pad out there that's I would say is actually heavy. But I would I would maybe give the Vaughn V9s a, a slight edge as far as weight. Um, what else? So I'll just go over some other options uh, that I ordered with these with the leg pads. I mean, like I said, there's so much. I'm probably like I'm gonna forget to, to maybe talk about certain options you can get with this, but. So I got only the, uh, I didn't get any leather straps with this. So this is gonna be the first pad that I've ordered myself that doesn't come with any leather straps because even with my V9s, I ordered uh, a leather strap at the knee and up top at the thigh rise. But I, you know, so this was, this is not necessarily meant to like replace my V9s as like my main pad. This is just, I wanted to try these out. So being that I, I felt like this was more of a experimental trial set, I wanted to maybe go away from what I would normally order, go outside the box a little bit with these just to try something new. Um, so I just went with their, like the quickest strappings you can get on this, which is just their, so basically I just have the uh, elastic Velcro at the knee. Then they have this other elastic Velcro piece that's kind of at the top of the calf, which is, om I would describe it sort of like a professor strap type of thing. I mean, if you look at the placement of it, that seems to be what they're going for with it. And then they have this nylon uh, strap that has velcro that goes over the the like mid calf area um, I did get it with the boot uh, Strap option. So I guess okay So I said there's no leather straps the boot their boot strap if you order boot strap I guess is leather so that's that there is a leather strap on here uh, You can order without the boot strap also. I mean it's removable so I could take it off But uh, I still like to use a boot strap and then for the options for the toe ties uh they give you the option of they have like a, a bungee type of toe tie system. I just got the, uh, I ordered the uh, skate lace one because I knew I was gonna put, these are an aftermarket Kova toe tie system that I like and use. So I knew I was gonna put that on. So I just ordered the skate lace because I knew I was gonna take that off anyway. But you can get a uh, bungee, you can get skate lace. And there's a third option that it, I think they describe it as like a, a hybrid. I, I really don't know though, because I, I, I didn't order it, I haven't seen it. But um, yeah, there's, so there's different options for that. Um, I got the, uh, the recessed knee, which means there's, as you can see, that it's a very uh, simplified knee cradle area. It's just all this uh, material on the, that's on the inside of the pad. Or, yeah. So there's no like sure grip or anything on it here. This is, there's a, uh, sure grip where the knee landing is um what else i think you can well this is this is adjustable where you where you want to place this strap this uh this is all velcro so this comes out you can adjust this where you want the placement of that goes uh you can order it with a with the outside knee wrap if you'd like to put it across your knee but i didn't bother because i i like to put it down by the i like to attach it down by the uh, calf so I just ordered it without that because I didn't want to have to have that flapping around or anything there. Um, as far as the leg channel goes, so I got, I ordered the tight fit for this, but it doesn't really seem that tight. Again, I haven't put these on yet, I haven't used them yet, but uh, just looking at it, it doesn't seem like a tight leg channel. It seems still fairly open. Um, so I'm not sure if you order like a loose fit or whatever, how much that changes, but uh, this looks fine to me. Um, what else, what else? Uh, so like, okay, so this is a pad that still uses knee rolls, which my V9s also use knee rolls. These ones are still more of the traditional rounded knee roll shape though, whereas Vaughn and they, I think was it the V7s had the flatter ones too. I mean, ever since the V7s, Vaughn has gone to a, like a flatter knee roll. Um, personally, I don't really care about knee rolls. It just seems like the, the pads that I want tend to be made with knee rolls. Um, I don't really care though. I've, 
I mean, I've used pads without knee rolls, pads with knee rolls. I don't think the knee rolls themselves make a difference. Um, you can make a flexible pad without knee rolls, but I don't know. That's just, I don't know if it's, if it's just part of the aesthetic that they think people who want flexible pads uh, want to see knee rolls on their pads, but I could take it or leave it. I don't really care, but if it's something that interests you, you know, this has the knee rolls, has the more rounded knee rolls, um, whereas like a pad like Vaughn, and I think even if you get the Warrior RGT2, they have like, it's almost like fake knee rolls. They're like flat, flat knee rolls. They don't really stick out that much. Um, as far as the graphic, so if you've seen in my other videos, usually the pads that I order myself, that I don't buy used, tend to be pretty colorful, pretty out there with the uh, colors and stuff. This one, again, because I wasn't really expecting this to be, to replace my Vons as my main pad, I figured I'd probably be reselling them. So I wanted to get something more neutral because of what I found is when I try to resell gear, even though I get like bright colors that I like, it ends up being harder to resell the gear later when I want to sell it because it's not going to match most people's uh, stuff that they want. So usually it ends up being the whiter, the plainer the gear, the easier it is to sell. So then I, I kind of figured I wanted to go with a uh, Bobrovsky type of look. So if you like Google Sergey Bobrovsky and see like the pads he's been using with the Panthers this past season, it's sort of a similar look. I mean, he was using C the CCM E-Flex 4, so it's not the same graphic, so I couldn't like make the exact same thing, but I tried to get like a similar look to what his pads were. Um, but that being said, just the graphics in general with LeFave stuff, this, with all their like 0.1 pads, I don't really care for. And I've said this in other videos, I feel like overall throughout the whole industry, most of the graphics are not very good, the stock graphics for pads. Uh, with my Vaughns, I didn't like their stock graphic, that's why I just got a solid color on the face of the pad, I didn't even color in the graphic. And this one, I feel like less is more with these graphics too, because there's just, it's just like random shapes. You can see like, look, there's just this random shape here, like there was a random shape up here you could color. It's just, there's just like these random cutouts of shapes along that it's almost like you do a puzzle to try to make it work together. Cause if you put a bunch as the same color, you can kind of fit it into a cohesive looking graphic, but overall it's just kind of random. I don't know who designed this graphic or if there was some reasoning behind it. I don't think it's great. So like I said, I think less is more. I think if you go with more of a solid color, it looks better, but hey, do whatever you want if you're ordering these. Um, a lot of people don't like where LeFave puts their name on these pads. I'll agree. I think it's it was, it's weird there because we're not used to seeing that. Most, most uh, companies put their name on the outer roll. And now that they partnered with True, I've, I've seen a few pads produced under the, the True name and they put the True on the outer roll. So True probably told them, <laughs> Yeah, that looks weird to go ahead and put it on the outer roll. So you're probably not gonna have to deal with this anymore now that they're making it under the true name. Uh, but yeah, it does look weird, I agree. But ultimately it's not a big deal. I don't really care that much. Um, they put the the, pot, the the model name, the 12.1 on the, on the outer roll of the boot. So I don't know why they decided to put this here, but whatever, like I said, it's not a huge deal, but yeah, it does look weird. Um, oh yeah, so I also ordered this pad with Lefebvre's version of their sliding material. Um, so I've heard from other people who've had like the E-Flex, they say the E-Flex doesn't slide well. And I've seen CCM speed skin in person. So I don't know what happened with the split between Lefebvre and CCM, if like CCM had the rights to the speed skin and Lefebvre couldn't use it or maybe Lefebvre just wanted to use something different. But this isn't quite the speed skin. Um, Cause like I said, I've seen the speed skin before. It's not exactly the same. I don't really know how good it comes off on the camera here. If you can really tell any difference or if it just looks like Gen Pro to you, but it's definitely different than the Gen Pro you see on the front. It, it has like these little, I don't know what I call them like warts or little dots. Again, I don't know if really you can see it here. I think, yeah, it's okay. So I feel like it's kind of coming across on the camera. And uh, it makes a little bit of, it's not the same quite the, as much of that noise that you get on speed skin, but it's kind of the same noise you can hear if you do this to speed skin. Um, but just kind of feeling this, 
if you didn't tell me this material was made to be something that slides better and you just gave me this material and been like, hey, look at this, what do you think this is? I would almost think this is meant to grip. It almost seems like like it's made for tackiness to, to grip onto something. Which, so that's kind of weird that that's their material to help it slide more. I haven't used these pads, so we'll see. I mean, I'm hoping for the best, I hope it slides well. Um, but like when you look at, for instance, Vaughn's Quick Slide or even Brian's Opti Slide, they call it. I, I, there's so many different names I get confused. But anyway, if you look at like Brian's or Vaughn's sliding material they use, even when you just feel it, like it feels very smooth and like slippery. Whereas, like I said, this almost feels like it would, it would be meant to be grippy or something. I don't know. But maybe the science behind it, where when it interacts with the ice, somehow it makes it slide better. I don't know. It remains to be seen. Uh, definitely looking forward to testing that out to see how well that is. Uh, but like I said, I've heard people say that the CCM E-Flex, which was designed by Lefebvre, is... Well, not the greatest at sliding, especially compared to like Vaughn or Brian's or Bauer or whatever. So, you know, we'll see. I, uh, you don't have to get this sliding material when you order it. You can get just regular Gem Pro, but again, like it's, you know, this is more of an experimental pad. So I definitely wanted to try uh, options with this that uh, I, maybe I wouldn't normally get or whatever, but you know, and I haven't, tr I haven't used CCM pad or, or Faith pad myself. So I definitely wanted to try their version of this sliding material to see how good it is. Um, I think that's about it as far as the specs of the leg pads. I can't think of what else to talk about. Oh, another thing I, I just noticing it. So like a lot of pads now come with sort of a pillow thing where the calf landing is. It kind of so it kind of makes that area in between the the actual landing part and where your calf goes. It makes it a little thicker and it makes it so your leg pushes the pad against the ice faster. Is the theory behind it? So this one doesn't come with that. Um, I think most most of the current Brian pads come with that. The Vaughn my V nines came with that. Um, I think uh, Bauer. It's not that it comes with a pillow, but it's like the way their landing is designed. It, it, they have some sort of technology design thing on their landing where, again, it's supposed to help that. This is just like, you know, more of an older school style where it's just straight up the, the strapping, the, the regular padding there, but it's not like an extra little pillow thing that's supposed to be kind of like a cheater, if you want to call it that. So again, that goes along with how I said this pad to me seems still more like a more classic style pad, you know. Um, that being said though, like, I mean, the CCM E-Flex is one of the most uh, used pads in the NHL. Um, so even though it's, I, you know, you want to say it's kind of like an older style pad, but I mean, a lot of guys are still into it, still using it. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but it's just kind of an observation to me that this, this seems more like a, a classic pad, even more so than the Vaughn these days. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's about it with the uh, leg pads. Can't think of anything else I want to say about that. So I will move on to the glove. <clears throat> Again, I did the uh, coloring and the graphic. Like I, I even really try to get detail, super detail as far as like even the back part of the glove to make it look like uh, Bob's gear that he used this past season. So this is a 590 glove. Again, with, like I said with the leg pads, there's just a lot, a lot of options. It's a lot to absorb when you're ordering this stuff. By all means, if you're confused or have any question at all, you should definitely talk to somebody, whoever you're ordering through. I mean, I recommend Pure Goalie. I had a really good experience. But whoever you're ordering through, whatever, you know, if you have any questions, definitely talk to somebody because there's a lot of options with this gear and you don't want to order something that you didn't mean to or whatever. So I got the 590 because it's a 60 degree break, which is what I like. You can get the 600. So it's the same, so again, Lefebvre, CCM, it's, it's since they designed uh, CCM, it's the same brakes or options. So you get the, the 600, the 590, or the 580. The 580 is a 90 degree break. It's that kind of weird thing where it, you close it like this and it has kind of like a floppy pocket that flips up when you close it. I never liked the 580. I never want to use it. It just, I've like tried it on in the store. It feels super weird to me. I've noticed that I get a 580. 580, it's like either you love it or hate it, it seems like. like. Some people swear by it, they love it. A lot of people don't like it, like me, it just seems weird, awkward. 
Um, so I would never order a 580. 590 is my preferred. I could use the 600. I, I want to say the 600 is a 75 degree break, but I'm just trying to go off the top of my head. I'm, I'm really not sure. But I, I know the 590 is a 60 degree, and that's mostly what I go for. Um, so I wanted to go with that, with, it, with this glove. Also, um, I went with a single T offset pocket. So as you can see, the T kind of curves off this way instead of coming straight up to this point. Now you can get double T, you can get the single T regular, not offset. Um, so I like it because when you close it, like look, you can see how good the seal is, especially in the pocket, right? And so the offset makes, uh, brings the T kind of out of the equation there. So it's not gonna get in the way of closing or anything. It's just off to the side when it closes. It gives you a really easy, good seal. Um, but as far as this uh, out of the box closing, it's not the greatest. Like it, I ordered the game ready. It said there's a tag in here that says game ready. But when you're comparing it to some other gloves, other companies gloves, it doesn't come as uh, fappy, if you want to say that, out of the box. So, I mean, I can close that. I don't have, it's not that it's hard to close, but it doesn't snap shut. Like this is a, if I try to snap, this is about how I close it. And then I have to really put in more effort for that little extra bit of closure. So like if I'm doing it slow, I can do a complete closure, but out of the box, it's not, it's not fappy. It's, it, you know, it's good, definitely going to take some working in. I mean, I don't anticipate that it's going to stay like this. I feel like once I break it in, use it more, it'll end up closing fine. So I don't think it's going to be a problem, but it's just, you know, some people want their, their glove out of the box these days, especially you know, the expectation these days is that's how they want it. Cause, um, Warriors are pretty good right out of the box. My Vaughn V9 was actually pretty decent out of the box. I mean, it did need some breaking in, but it, it was came out of the box better than this as far as closing. And then the other thing too is, because I like my gloves to be really open and, and flat when not closed. Um, and I feel like I have to work at this one to get it, get it like that. So like, so I want it to be like this, but naturally, like I'm holding it open with my hand. I mean, you can't see it in my hand inside the glove, but I'm really holding it open. And I, as you can see, I've been working it to open it as I'm talking. So I want it to be like this, just naturally, like effortlessly be like that. As of now, if I were to leave this alone, it would kind of settle back to about like this as its normal opening. So with this glove, I have to kind of work it in for both closing it and having it be as open and flat as possible. But at least I can see when I do stretch it out, it will get to a, an opening level that I like to play with. So I know it's possible with this, it's just apparently with the LeFave glove, you just need a little work, a little elbow grease to uh, break it in how you want it. But I don't foresee that really being a problem. It's just a matter of it's not necessarily game ready as they claim, I would say out of the box. Um, the back hand, let me open this up. So, I mean, you see it closed. <coughs> The back hand is pretty straightforward. So you got a strap here and a strap on the other side that opens this part up. And then this Velcro opens that. And then, then you got, uh, it's pretty standard. You got a, a kind of, I'd say back of your knuckles area here, a, a strap that's just Velcro that you can adjust. This one is more like kind of mm, bottom of the back of the palm, I would say, that you can adjust. And then this is wrist adjustment. Um, so like I said, pretty straightforward, nothing revolutionary, nothing new. It's, I mean, it's about what you get with most type of gloves. The one thing I would say that I found with this glove that I'm, I haven't seen in any glove I've owned before that it's probably a really small thing, but I really like it is so it's got these tabs for the pinky and the thumb. Uh, so you, like, you know how most gloves or a lot of gloves have like these little, I don't know what you want to call them, straps or whatever. It's because there's little like stalls for your thumb and your pinky on gloves. And like the classic way that they've made them for years with a lot of gloves is these two little straps that come out where the thumb is and the pinky is. And you just kind of, you can either just like pull it and leave it. But then if you do that over time, your thumb, your fingers by opening and closing the glove kind of end up loosening it and you got to keep adjusting it. Or if you won't get it to like a level you want, you would have to tie them, but they're not very easy to tie or make a knot with. So I never liked that old system of these stupid straps for the, the pinky and the thumb stall. This uses a Velcro and elastic piece. So this little Velcro tab 
uh, you pull it and you <clears throat> it tightens the uh, thumb and then there's one for the pinky stall so it makes it super easy so you get it to the level you want and then you velcro it and it's gonna stay there I mean maybe over time the elastic might stretch out you might have to adjust it but I definitely like this system better than just the stupid little like leather straps that have been used for years. Like I never thought that was a good design thing. Even years ago, I never, like I, I always thought like, why isn't there anything better than this? But they just kept using that. And like I said, it's a small thing. Maybe most of you probably aren't even gonna care about that. But to me, I really like that little design upgrade with this glove that they have that option instead of the old style. <clears throat> so let me close this back up. Um, the other thing is too, with the straps that close the backhand, it's elastic, which gives you a little more give. Like if you're trying to, you know, present a straightforward glove, it gives a little. It's a, it gives a little more when you're trying to uh, have that wrist flexion. See that the Velcro, I mean the elastic, has some more of a give to it. So even though it's maybe not as open of a wrist area as like the warrior type of gloves or whatever. It's kind of similar to uh, like how I would say Bauer does it, where Bauer has some elastic going on there that, that makes it, um, makes the wrist flexion easier. So I do like that about this also. Uh, it's a single piece. You know what, off the top of my head right now, I don't even remember if double, if you could get a two piece glove anymore from them. So sorry about that, but I'll tell my head I can't, I don't remember if two-piece glove is, is even a, an option, but I wouldn't have wanted it anyway. At this point, I'm I'm team one-piece glove. Um, that being said, it's a little thicker than some other gloves out there. Um, like for instance, my Vaughn V9 glove, I would say is a little, maybe a little lighter, a little thinner. Um, and I think that maybe is just the way they design the protection. So like for instance, warrior gloves, they are kind of chunky, they're super light. So I get, I don't know like exactly what is in the internals of like a warrior glove, but they feel kind of chunky, but they're super light. And I would say with this one, it's not super light, but it has like that kind of chunky feel too, like, like the warrior glove. So maybe like their idea is just to use like thicker foam or whatever material as the protection, whereas like, Vaughn, they love their carbon. So maybe Vaughn uses like a thinner piece of foam and then they put the carbon over it, which overall makes the glove, the protection area is thinner, but the carbon is, is a hard piece that protects it more. So I, it could be like, that's the reasoning behind why this feels chunkier than my Vaughn glove, whatever. I mean, I don't really care that it feels a little chunkier. Like as long as I can, I'm able to work it in and it it's, closes and opens good. Like I said, the weight is fine. It doesn't stand out as being super light or super heavy. It just seems like kind of an in the middle as far as weight goes uh, of gloves out there. Um, but I, like I said, I do notice like the kind of chunky feel of it. But I think that's just how they decided to design it, that maybe they're just using thicker foams as the way to protect your, your hand in this. Uh, so I don't know if that might matter to you. To me, like I said, as long as I'm able to open and close the glove, uh, and it feels comfortable and I have like decent wrist flexion. I don't really care if it feels a little chunkier or a little thinner or whatever. Um, it's got, so for like the wrist area, it's got this one piece thing here. Um, like I said, the wrist flexion is pretty good. So I don't know if that helps contribute to it or if it's more of the elastic straps that, that do it, but Wrist flexion feels pretty good. I like it. I don't feel like it's restricting me at all as far as that goes. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Like I said, you know, you could get, there's different options with the T you could get. Um, there's the different brakes. Um, yeah, so I guess that's pretty much it as far as the glove. Um, Seems pretty promising, just like I said, I, I just gotta work it, put a little elbow grease in it, work it in a little bit. But uh, I mean, it feels pretty good. I, I, you know, I don't foresee that the glove is gonna be an issue for me. 
so next we come to the blocker. Um, and I'm gonna say just out of the three pieces out of the box, this is the one I, I like the best. It's, I'm laughing because it's just like, it's a blocker, like what are you talking about? That's what you like the best, who cares? Um, but I've really come to appreciate blockers more. Like most, most guys will just say, oh, a blocker's a blocker, or they don't really care, it's not a big deal. But I've, I've come to appreciate the finer points of a blocker. And um, I really like this blocker, which isn't a surprise to me, because while I really haven't been a Lefave or whatever brand they've produced for in the past user, like CCM, whatever, as far as the leg pads with the glove, I have used some of their blockers in the past, specifically under CCM or Reebok, and I've, I've always thought they made a pretty good blocker. So I, it doesn't surprise me that the blocker is really good. Um, I would still say Bowers 2S, or at this point now the Ultrasonic, is probably the, I would, if you ask me what the best blocker is, I would say that is the best blocker out there right now. But uh, this is a pretty close second. Um, so some things I like about it is just like the protection seems really good. Um, you know, it feels very sturdy and kind of thick, but not to a point where it's like inhibiting your, your wrist movement or whatever. So, I mean, you know, I, I feel like I can move it fine, but it definitely feels like substantial as far as the padding. Um, which for me has been something that ever since years and years ago with a flimsy blocker I had that I got injured on my, my index finger. It's always been something in the back of my mind with blockers. So I really like when they're like super padded tanks. So I love the padding on this. I really love the sidewall. If you've seen my recent Vaughn uh, review videos for the V9s, I was really kind of unhappy with the sidewall on my Vaughn blocker. It was, so granted that it's a two-piece, but this is also a two-piece sidewall. So a two-piece sidewall is always gonna have a little more, uh, bent, uh, you know, it's gonna have that point where it's attached, where it can kind of move. It's not gonna just be a solid wall necessarily, which is why I like the Bauer uh, blocker, because it is a solid, the sidewall is just one piece connected to it. And it's, it's, it's almost like having a two-sided blocker where you could even use the sidewall as a blocker. That's how hard it is on the Bauer. And this, even though it's a two-piece, it's pretty hard. And it, it would, I feel like it'll stand up pretty good to shots. It's not gonna give in. And while it has, you know, a little bit of flexibility or movement where it's attached on the two-piece part, the actual uh, sidewall, this area here, is very solid. It doesn't, it's not gonna bend or whatever. Whereas my Vaughn one was just, it's very floppy. It's, it's like the sidewall, whatever material they put in it is not as sturdy as this. Like it, it bends very easily. And while you shouldn't be turning your arm and you know, perfect technique would dictate your face, your blocker is always gonna be what's hit it, what's out facing the puck. The reality is in scrambles or just user error, sometimes the you're gonna end up using your sidewall to block pucks. And the sturdier it is, the better. Because if you got a flimsy, floppy sidewall, it'll just hit it and go past it. And you might squeak in, you know, between your arm and your body. So I really like that even though this is a two-piece blocker, the sidewall is very sturdy. And I don't feel like that would be an issue with this at all. I don't know why Vaughn's blocker, the sidewall is so flimsy on theirs. But I really like that about this. Um, you know, I don't know, like I said, I haven't used this yet or anything, but so I don't know how like the rebounds are gonna come off the face of this um, because I don't, as far as I know, they don't, I haven't heard of any like material they use. Like Bauer has a, uh, what is it, the curved composite or whatever they use that makes it the face hard. Vaughn, you can get like a carbon sheet, which is what I got on my blocker face to make it extra hard for to kick out the rebounds more. Um, I don't recall seeing any like specific material they use that's supposed to like kick rebounds out further with this. So I don't know how the rebounds are gonna be with these, but that's another thing I look for in a blocker. So, you know, I look for protection. I look for, I like a really sturdy sidewall and I look for how much I want the puck to, or how much the puck bounces off the face of it. Because I'm not so much a guy that cares about it with the leg pads as much, but with the blocker, I really want to send the pucks further away because if you, make a blocker save and then it dies like a few feet in front of you, it's more awkward than if that happens with your legs 
uh, leg save with your leg pads. So with the blocker, I definitely want the rebounds flying further out. Um, so that I can't talk about with this. I haven't used it yet. But as far as the other things, like the you know, the protection level, the sidewall, I really like. I'm very happy with that. Uh, another little kind of quirky thing about the palm. So you can get different size palms. I got the large size palm. I mean, I'm not like a huge guy. I'm 5'11". So I, I mean, I don't know. This is my hand. I don't think it's unusually big or anything. But so I figured the large would do. I mean, that's normally what the generic size of palms are for most senior uh, blockers. Uh, that you could also get an extra large. So I don't know if I would have been better off getting an extra large, but there's some tightness right here in the thumb part. And if you watched my review of the Brian's Optic set, the Optic 2 set, uh, I said the same thing about the blocker palm. So I don't know what's going on these days with these companies with the way they design the palm, but really more than size because, I mean, my other fingers, it's not like they're, it's not like they're, uh, tight with the other fingers. It's really just that one spot. So I don't really think it was a matter of I needed to get the extra large instead of the large palm. It just kind of feels like it has something to do with the way they stitch. There's like a stitch going across the, the base of the thumb here. And I feel like it's just something to do with that where like it's stitched super tight that makes it kind of awkward. But with that being said, it's probably something that will loosen up with use, you know, out of the box, fresh, not being used. It feels tight. But I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say it's probably going to loosen up as I use it. But also, you know, it's not something that I felt with my Vaughn blocker. It's not something I felt with uh, Bauer blockers. It's just the only two I've noticed this on so far has been the Brian's Optic 2. And this one has this like tight base of thumb thing that feels uncomfortable when you first put your hand in it. So hopefully that loosens up a little bit. It probably will. Um, but it's just a little like quirky thing to talk about. Um... So I got the, again, the, with all the options you can order, um, for with the blocker, you could go with the, they call it the 595 or the 585. Um, oh God, now I'm confusing myself. The 585 is what I ordered. Oh, look, man, now I'm confused. Now I'm, I'm mixing myself up. One has the one has the binding list and one has the binding. Now I just confused myself as to which one I ordered. So obviously, as you can see, I ordered the one without a binding. I believe that was the five eight five, and I believe the five nine five has the binding. But now I might have switched those two. If I if I got that wrong, I'll correct it in the description of the video or whatever. But I want to say the 585 is the one without binding and the 595 is the one with a binding. Either way, there's two options. One has binding, one doesn't have binding. I'll clear it up in the description of the video because off the top of my head now, I, I got them confused. Um, so I wanted it without the binding. I don't have a need for a binding. So whatever, I got the bindingless one. Um, I also got the centered uh, palm position on the blocker. Uh, that's kind of what it matches up with my Vaughn where my Vaughn blocker palm is um, and then I got the uh, the full wraparound piece for the uh, wrist area you can get it where you don't have this this piece and it kind of just um, these side pieces just attached to the back hand or the back of the blocker <clears throat> so those are a few of the options you can get with the blocker like I said again there's so many options with all this all these pieces of this gear you really got to look into it. You got to be sure. I highly recommend, uh, you know, talking to somebody who knows what all, what all the options mean, what, you know, with whoever you're ordering through, because you can't just order straight from LaFave. You have to go through Pure Goalie or whoever else will uh, sell the gear. Um, but yeah, so definitely I would say, don't try to just, if you're have any questions at all, confused at all, don't just try to guess and at the options because if I would have guessed at some of these options, I would have ordered different stuff that I wouldn't have liked. So it's definitely a good thing that I ended up talking to Wack about it. So I ended up getting exactly what I wanted. Um, other than that in the blocker, I don't really know what else to say about it. Um, so like I said, this is the most promising piece of the gear that I feel like I could definitely use as my main blocker if I had to. Um, the... Uh, 
glove. It seems like I'll like it. Seems like I can get used to it. Like I said, just it's gonna take a little work to really break it in a little more. But the glove seems like it's gonna. I'm gonna like it too. Uh, the leg pads are the only thing I'm. I'm kind of worried about that I might not like because, like I said, it's out of the box. They're not that flexible feeling. Even though I got them supposedly at the most flexible setting you can order it at. So. You know, we'll see again, that might be an issue of just breaking it in. It might be one of those type of pads that just require break in and it's just not that flexible out of the box. But, uh, you know, it's gonna be hard. I really don't foresee the leg pads beating out uh, like my Vaughn. You know, I'm always looking for something, you know, I'm a Vaughn guy as right now, but you know, if I, I'm not like opposed to switching, if I ever find something that I feel is better for me or feels better than the Vaughn, I'll switch. Um, but. At, I really haven't, especially as far as the leg pads, I haven't found anything that will beat out the, uh, the Vaughn leg pads. You know, the blocker, I, there's been, like I said, I like the Bauer one, I like this one. I, I think there's several blockers that are better than the Vaughn blocker, but because I usually get like custom or specific colors and graphics on my gear, I just kind of order the Vaughn blocker to go along with the rest of it. But if I was going with really what I thought was the actual best blocker, there's other blockers besides Vaughn that I would go with. But like with the glove and the leg pads, I just haven't found anything I like better than Vaughn. They've just, mainly like comfort and feel, they're just awesome. And then also they perform great too. So, you know, out of the box, I can already tell you, I probably like this better than my Vaughn blocker. Glove, probably not gonna like it better, but it seems like a, a good glove, I'm gonna like it. And the leg pads, mm. Not holding out a lot of hope on the leg pads, but we'll see. I mean, I'll give them a chance. Um, so that's kind of like my predictions. I like to make predictions when I do like an out of the box of how I think I'm gonna like it. And then when I actually do the video, we'll see if I, you know, cause sometimes, you know, a lot of us can only like look at stuff real quick in a store or online. So we have to make these snap judgments. So I kind of, it's kind of interesting to see like, to, for me to make a snap judgment, like just looking at it without using it. And then to see how, if that actually pans out or if I, I was wrong after the fact, after I use it for a while. So we'll see how that goes. I'll definitely do a review video after I've used this for a while. Um, but for now, uh, that's about it. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll clear up the whole 595585 thing with the blocker and I'll have to go look it up, uh, but I'll clear it up in the description of the video. Um, other than that, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, be on the lookout. I'll do a review video after using it. I mean, it's going to be a while because I want to use this for a bit first, but I'll definitely do a review video. Other than that, uh, I'll see you next time.